Gray, I'm managing editor of the Cigar Lounger magazine, and welcome back to another interview with one of our personal favorites, House of Emilio 1502 Cigars. This is Enrique. Grant, thank you for having me here. My name is Enrique Sanchez, 1502 Cigars. And thank you for taking time out, we appreciate that. So, uh, tell us a little bit about 1502 Cigars, maybe a little bit of your background. How did 1502 Cigars come about? Well, it's an excellent question you asked. 1502 actually was the year Nicaragua was discovered by Christopher Columbus. I was born and raised in Nicaragua. My family been living in Nicaragua for 300 years probably. And that's uh, giving something, uh, a, a number, a, a name to remember something where everything started. It was the year 1502. Wow, I like that. How did you come into the House of Emilio? Tell us a little bit about that story. Well, it actually happened in IPCPR 2012 in Orlando. I, I got to meet Gary. Uh, we a great gentleman who was down. Uh, I gave him one of the 15 to Ruby. He gave me one of the AF2, one of my favorite. Uh, we talk. We didn't talk about cigars. Uh, we talk about life. We talk about like, his vision, uh, what, uh, what I wanted for the cigar industry. And one thing led to another. And after that, he gets up and said, You know what? It would be an honor for me to be carrying your cigars. And I was shocked in the beginning. I didn't have the answer. And then he told me he had a project in Nicaragua about a La Musa, an art, art school. So I said, okay, let's do a deal. You let me help you with your project in Nicaragua, and uh, uh, I will let you help me out with distribution at 1502 in the country. Well, that so seems to be working out pretty nicely for the both of you guys right India. now. So before we got on camera, you were kind enough to gift me what is probably right now my favorite cigar. In fact, when I walked in to Cigar Mojo, Trey had already said out loud, hey Graham, aren't you going in for the 1502 today? Right? So he already knows I'm a, I'm a raving fan, so I, 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 I do this as a fan first and foremost. But one of the things you pointed out to me that I've always noticed oh. is at the foot of the cigar, there's a, a little wrap over it. Tell us a little bit about the wrap. Oh, Grant, that's what we call a cigar, cigar lock. Actually, it's my innovation to the industry. After more than 20 something years smoking cigars, now I get to do things my way. So what it does is it protects the wrapper uh, for peeling breaking. It helps you to light the cigar from the outside to the inside. And from the first draw, you're gonna feel the Nicaraguan flavor. Outstanding. I, I'm stunned that actually we haven't seen this already more often. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Well, and you're not gonna be able to see it very often because we patent that right now. Fan. It's going to be only for uh, the cigar for Global Premium Cigars, which is my company, and definitely 1502 Cigar Group. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit about 1502 in terms of the portfolio of cigars. I know there's a green label, there's the ruby, and there's the black, correct? So tell us a little bit about each. Well, 1502 Emerald is the one you have in your hand right now. It's uh, actually when we created, it was my starting of the day cigar. Um, one of the master blenders I was working with, uh, in nick nicknamed it as a Fina Fuerte, fine and strong. So it's a cigar I always like to have after my breakfast. Uh, then you move to the 1502 Rubin, the one I'm enjoying right now, actually it's my after lunch cigar. And it, that, that cigar is a more medium body, medium plus body. Mm -hmm. And then for after dinner you have the 1502 Black Core. And it will before you try it because it has its character. It is absolutely, it's funny, I would call it full flavored. I, I'm reluctant to go full bodied because I, I almost feel like that has a negative connotation that people are reluctant to try those kind. But I think anybody who's maybe not committed to just Connecticut uh, cigars would thoroughly enjoy the, the black. I think, I think it's enough flavor but, but smooth enough that everybody would actually enjoy that. Definitely. One of the things when we do the blending uh, is try to get the flavor. All three lines, they're full flavor lines, and 100% different between one or the other. So the black one specifically, I wanted a, a, a full, a full body cigar with a full flavor, but a, a, a cigar that doesn't pull the, the head out of your chest, yeah. and which you would be able to enjoy. And that's one of the reasons we smoke cigars, is to enjoy. It's having a struggling with a cigar that you know is 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 overpowering in your palate. It's not that that, that same that enjoyable. So yeah. that one, it has the character, but it has the flavor, and that's the reason. 
So we like to ask some uh, offbeat questions, if you will, now that we have a little background in 1502 and, and the profile of some of your cigars. Tell us about, you know, a little bit more about Enrique. Uh, one of our favorite questions that Vince and I like to ask is, in the history of mankind, if you could sit and have a cigar with anyone, who would that be? Hmm. That would be Sino Davido. Really? Sure. Okay, give us a little background on it. Why you? Because you didn't even hesitate there. So give us some background as to why you would you would choose well, I see Sino Davidov as one of the most elegant person, and he he always lie about the tobacco. So uh, before uh, enjoying a cigar, it was a gentleman habit. Now we get to enjoy it with the ladies. Thank God. Great. But it's it's mainly the gentleman. So he identified that kind of character. A gentleman is smoking a cigar. It's not just grabbing one stick, it's the elegance, everything that has to carry with a cigar. Okay, tell us about your favorite um, size cigar that you like to smoke. If, if you're, are, are you a Toro guy, more of a Corona guy? I know often Vince and I ad nauseum bring up Lanceros. What, what's a personal favorite for you? Well, it all depends uh, how, many t how much time you have to enjoy a cigar. Uh, my favorite, definitely, it will be a Toro size. Toro. Uh, Toro is a 6x50. It gives the perfect percentage between the wrapper, the binders, and the long fingers. But if you, have, if you don't have that much time, a Roost would do it, or, or even a Lancero would do it. And um, by the way, we come out with something, something new this year. I will get back to you. This okay, later. I know. You can't, you'd have to kill us if you told us. <laughs> I understand. No, no, I will tell you later on. Oh, okay, when the camera's are off. Just about ready to be shipped here in the oh. state. They will be hitting the market. But, Fantastic. But then, going back to your question, you have less time of that, a uh, uh, Corona size would be perfect. So it, it depends on the time you have to enjoy a cigar. Are you, uh, you have a favorite time of, of day? I, I often believe the most underrated time to smoke a cigar is in the morning. I, I love waking up with a great cup of coffee and the right cigar. I think that pairing, while I tend to smoke a lot in the evening just because of the pace of life, do you have a particular time of day that you enjoy more than another? I smoke cigar very often during the day, but one hour specific is after dinner. I finish dinner in my house, grab a, 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 a scotch, a, 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 a flor de caña room from Nicaragua, or a good cognac. Get out of the patio, so my wife doesn't let me smoke in the house. So get out of the patio, almost lock the door, said no kids allowed. And that is my time. It's the time, yeah. I take, I take the moment to light my cigar, to enjoy, to think all the things I had done during the day, what I need to do, uh, replan uh, my strategies, or just you know, relax and, and, and chill. Put my music on, and that's it. That's my moment. It's, now, it's one hour and, and 30 minutes of the day, then, which is only me. I love it. We're much, much the same way. That's usually how we wrap up our day. So I'm, I'm not at all uh, surprised by your answer. How, so prior to getting into 1502, give us a couple of sticks that uh, cigars that you were smoking that that really got you excited about getting into the cigar industry. Well, it's very odd for, for me because I'm in Nicaragua and I started sm a lot of, smoking a lot of the Cubans, the Habanos. Actually, my first real cigar that I can smoke, it was a Romeo Julio de Chucha. I know I was, uh, it was probably 20, 22 years ago, and I, I inhaled a couple of times, you know, you see when you see the flying pigs going everywhere, and you know, it had to be the cigar because Pink yeah. Floyd was not playing the stereo. So that's, that's, that's how it started. After that, I started allowed, uh, enjoying Cohibas, all different brands. Yeah. Uh, 15 years uh, ago, I started enjoying more Nicaragua, and I started okay. saying, wait a second, this is outstanding. There's nothing to do with the, with the Cubans. And, and also, it was all the respect that the Havanos uh, had and everything, but they said, this is a wonderful thing. I started trying, trying new things, new things, until I got a crazy idea working with my blend. And then I said, I knew there was something out there that, that, that was not in the market yet. Uh, different flavors that we haven't tried yet. And that's when I went in and started reaching until I find what you do that you see the 1502 Emerald, the 1502 Ruby, and the 1502 Black Gold. Well, I tell you, House of Emilio is on fire because if you're anywhere on social media, each of the brands does a fabulous job checking in, staying in communication with everybody who's turning into raving fans like Vince and myself. 
Uh, if people do not yet have 1502 inside of their local tobacconist humidor, how could they go find a little more information about the company? Well, you can go directly to our website. It's at 1502.com, 1502cigars.com. I over there, you will see all the information you need. You will see all the publications they have done by 1502, all the reviews, the blogging, uh, the videos we have done, and you can go to Tobacco Nears, Nears You, and you, you see the map with all the location where they, they carry 1502. You only put your zip code and tell you which one is the nearest one. So it's, it's a lot of information there. Or you can go to our, our so social media. Everything is 1502 cigars. Even Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, everything is 1502 cigars. And you really are amazing in the how quickly you get back to all the responses. Even Vince and I sitting here the other day, we were posting a couple of shots of what we were smoking, and you were virtually immediate. It was actually uncanny how quickly you get back, you know, either in a retweet or a response to what we well, posted up. And it's a little bit awkward because, you know, sometimes my wife is like, the phone, yeah. please, the <laughs> iPad, you know, put it away. It's my time. Yeah. Yeah, okay, honey, I'll do that. No right. problem. I, but I try to get them uh, to respond the most uh, quick uh, as I can, that's yeah. for sure. I think that's great. Is there anything you wanted to cover? About where the cigar is made? Yeah. The garage is well, yeah. actually, 1502 was the unique around the cigar in Columbus, and our cigars are being, being uh, manufactured in uh, Placencia cigars in Estelín, Nicaragua. Okay. Yes. Wow, which has really turned into what feels like the new capital of cigars, right? I mean, it's, it is everywhere. Uh, Nicaraguan seems to have taken over. Uh, and, I, and I don't mean that in any sort of demeaning way against the DR or anything like that, but it feels like the industry has moved in in droves into Nicaragua and, and Esteli really as the, the center point. I don't know, maybe you can add something to that. I mean, are you seeing sure, the same no, thing? I definitely, and one of the things we always go in Nicaragua, is, uh, when we're in Nicaragua, we go to Esteli, Cigar Town. As soon as you, you drive into Esteli, you can smell that, the, the, the cigar, the smell of, of tobacco, and that's wonderful. Now. Nicaragua is, is have great advantage of, of, of growing tobacco. First, we got four different regions. Uh, we got Esteli, Condega, Jalapa, and the island of Pumetepe. And with the, 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 the flavor, the construction in areas is quite different between one or the other. So in one country, you have four different tobacco. And you can, you can, you, you can mold and you can manage to, to have, become a, a, a create great blend. Uh, and also, in Nicaragua is another uh, adventure, it's that the, in, the, in the 80s, there was a civil war there. So all the land rested for 10 years. And now, the, a lot of the flavor, a lot of the strength you're getting is a, 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 probably a, a new land, and, and the land that has not been so much uh, a Overly cultivated and right. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about um, the business side of owning and running 1502 cigars. Are you on the road a lot? Is is uh, making appearances at a lot of the stores a regular part of what you do? Kind of give us a day in the life of how you spend uh, your time. Well, Grant, let me tell you this. I haven't worked one day in three years. I hope my wife is not watching, so right. I always say I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> For me, this is not working. This is my passion. This is what I like to be doing. Uh, not only smoking a cigar, also bonding with people coming to a cigar lounge, talking to, uh, to uh, meeting new people, uh, have, uh, approaching them with a different conversation. That's for me, that's me. I love doing that. Uh, and yes, it requires a lot of traveling, a lot uh, away from the family. I, I have three kids, uh, and, and the new one is only six months. So, you know, that little part, it, it, it breaks your heart sometimes, but, you know, this is what I do. This is what I like. This, this is my life. This is my style. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, I've held off as long as possible for not lighting this, so if you make me wait any longer, I'm gonna to start to get cranky. So Thank I'm gonna light this up. Do you wanna do you wanna do a uh, well, I wanted to quick how about you know uh, something different we haven't asked is you know is there any interest in, in venturing into like uh, Honduran tobacco or Mexican tobacco which you're starting to see more and more people experimenting with? Well we talked about the five you have something that has what is it five up to five different Five different tobaccos for the filler, but it's Nicaraguan. Okay, it's all so, Nicaraguan. So I mean, yeah, so I didn't mix that many countries. There's only two countries to it, but uh, yeah, you can go to the DR. Well, actually, 
each of the plants is 90% of my cigars, they have uh, tobacco uh, from Nicaragua. Okay. But they always use something else to give it a perfect touch. For example, the one you're holding right now, yes. it's a Jalapa wrapper, binders from Nicaragua, long fillers from Nicaragua, but it has a long filler from San Andres, Mexico. Which you don't, you don't see that very often, you see a lot in the, in the wrapper. Yeah. But not in the long filler. But that little one, so tasty, so flavorful, and, 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 and that aroma it gets out is phenomenal, it's fantastic. For example, the ruby, and which I'm enjoying right now, it has an Equatorian wrapper, Biners and Long Filos from Nicaragua. And the black volume we were talking about, it has a wrapper from San Andres, Mexico, a double binders, and three ligeros from Nicaragua. So it's always a, 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 a little bit of, of something else to give it a perfect touch. Now, let me give you a side information. Yeah. Um, this year, we'll be coming out with the fourth blend of 1502. Oh, really? Uh, it's, called, it's, called, it's called 1502 Nicaragua. That is 100% Nicaragua. And it's tobacco for the four major regions growing tobacco in Nicaragua. You got Esteli, you got Condega, you got Jalapa, and you got the Aislin of Ometepe. All uh, created in one cigar. And actually, it was very interesting how I started working in Dublin. And, I, and it was when my wife told me she was pregnant. So it, that, then the moment it's like, I had to I do something. Uh, and I was thinking about my son. So I created that so my son never forget his food. 100% Nicaragua. And I'm gonna do is the, when we get the first production, the first box, I'm gonna put it away. And whenever he's 18, I will give it to him so he can open it up. Hopefully, he will share with me and he can he, he smoke his cigar. His wow. To Nicaragua. What a great story that is. Wow. Let's, I'm honored that you actually would share that with us. That's, that's uh, you know, this is a personal business, yeah. right? I mean, I. One of the things that we love about the cigar community extends beyond just um, the generosity that exists inside of the, the community. But it's also very personal. And I think, uh, you know, as Fred had pointed out, uh, people are, get to be themselves. And, and in this world we live in, the opportunity to do that and still run a, a profitable business it is a terrific opportunity. So we thank you for you know sharing what is really a personal. I, you know, it, it is a personal business, that's for sure. But that's something I want to give later on to my to my, my sons. They can, if they're willing and they like the cigars, they, they like the industry. It's something they can carry on with that. So it, it's not. It, it, hopefully, it doesn't end up with me. Hopefully, I will be the starting of uh, a long term. Uh, it's it cars business. So are you thinking, are you already beginning to think about legacy and this idea of your son potentially taking over the business, if I'm hearing you? I, hopefully they, yeah. they will do so. Actually, whenever I have the chance, I always take my oldest one, he's 10, and, and, and to work and even do inventory, doing this. And it was very interesting because I was in, it was in, I think it was in Pittsburgh doing a, in a vendor, and my wife, uh, we had a ship selling cigars, it's like P. And, and I call my wife and say, honey, uh, I'm here, it's a Saturday, uh, you have to go to the warehouse to get, the, get those cigars. And she's like, but I have no clue what, what to do. Do, me, do. do something. Go get Alejandro, Alejandro's my oldest one, give him the keys, tell him what he needs, and that's it. He called me, she called me like 20 minutes after, like, yep. He had it. He had it, exactly what it had. It's a, 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 a 1502 Emerald Toro Night Count. So it's like, boom. how many boxes? Two. Like how many, and he is perfectly, and he's carrying the boxes. He knew exactly what to do. Wow. And it's only 10 years. And that's why? Because every had the chance, I always take him to, to the, well, with the other ones come along, they will be doing it. They're going to do it as well. That, 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 my second uh, kid, Antonio, is very interesting because he has a great flavor and first man. And I was working with a guard band, something in the table, and I see his, his little hand is moving very slow. I turn out and he moved, uh, pushed his thing out. And, and when I asked what he wanted, he pointed one of the bands. And he got one of the 1502 Black Bull that was just taking the band out of the cigar. Yeah. And the first thing he do, he smell it. He's like, mmm, yummy. So I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. come here, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> I smell this and give it a cigar. So he's like, mmm, yummy. So every time he, he always like uh, see me getting my hand into the humidor and he's like always trying to re uh, look over and reach and see what he's doing. It's like let me smell, let me smell, let me smell. So that that kind of thing, you know, it, it really it, it, starts young. It, it starts young, but it, it, for me, it's, it's like a great satisfaction that hopefully later on they will carry 
uh, this business uh, with a passion that I started with Ares. So you talked a little bit about uh, the bands just a moment ago, sure. and uh, th this is a very elegant band that you have. Is there any story behind how you arrived at the artwork? Because I'm assuming that, like everything else inside of the cigar, it's personal and it's reflective of a lot of your personal taste. So, can you share with us a little bit about the band itself? Actually, in question, Grant, and at the finish, we will share it with that one. Actually, what you see in the center of the band, about 1502, you will see a Spanish doublon. Mm -hmm. That was the currency of Spain in the year 1502. And what we did in Globe Premium Cigars, my company, is United Most Valley Currency. You got the, the, the Spanish uh, doublon, mm -hmm. and uh, from the old war and for the new war, you got our tobacco, or as one. Wow, that's a great story. Well, listen, thank you for taking time out. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Enrique, we're, again, we're fans. And uh, if you don't or you haven't yet smoked a 1502 cigar, do yourself a favor. Go find out where they're sold. Ask your tobacconist and make sure you try each of them because each one is better than the last.